And uh, Chris and I are going to talk or our, uh, our give a little deep dive into UI editable uh, properties. So before we talk about UI editable properties, let's talk about properties in Data Hub. What does that even mean? Um, so currently, or kind of uh, to date, the main way that we have supported kind of arbitrary key value relationships or key value uh, properties is through this kind of properties tag. Um, it's just a really straightforward way to kind of give a, a name of a property and a value. And historically, all we have supported is just an arbitrary uh, uh, string relationship between those two. These are, um, so these have been really, really useful for folks to kind of have a flexible way to uh, kind of push and rich metadata during ingestion or programmatically via our APIs. Um, it's also something we actually index those properties in search. So it, it, it lends for much more advanced kind of search use cases, uh, filtering, et cetera. So the pros with, with this so far is that uh, properties have been or are extremely flexible and easy to add uh, anything that's related to your organization that maybe doesn't fit nicely or neatly within Data Hub's metadata model. The con of it is that it can only they can only be added or edited during ingestion or via our API. And also the names and values are unrestricted, i.e. ungoverned. So very easy to kind of get into the garbage in, garbage out scenario. So um, what we've heard from the community uh, really over the past year, like this is this, we've been hearing this feedback quite a bit, is that folks want the ability to um, actually manage or edit those property values via the UI, particularly catering towards less technical users that maybe aren't as comfortable working with an API or aren't managing ingestion pipelines, um, and really just a way to um, kind of like supercharge data governance. So what we have done is twofold we are introducing UI-based uh, edits. We are also introducing something called structured properties. So structured properties, we've talked about this in um, prior sessions, and Chris is gonna go into much more detail here, but at a high level, structured properties are a way for you to create really governed or strongly typed property values. Um, it could be assigned, it could be of type um, earn. So if you want to associate an actual or another entity within Data Hub, you can do that. It can be a string, it can be rich text, date, number. Um, you can have single select, multi-select, really just kind of creating these property sets of governed and, um, and uh, validated uh, data types. Um, so what we have already merged in is the basic support for structured properties. So that will absolutely be available in uh, V13. Chris has his UI-based edits work that he's going to show you in our demo in just a second. That'll be coming um, ideally with V13 as well. We need to get that through review. And then as a later stage of that, um, what we will be introducing, and this is just a placeholder mock, so don't hold us to <laughs> this design, is the ability to also then add and uh, actually create uh, structured properties via the UI. So I am going to hand it over to Chris to give us a demo of what that looks like. All right. Thanks, Maggie. Let me just share my screen real quick. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, as Maggie said, today I'm going to be showing you guys kind of what we have so far and what's coming for structured properties in Data Hub. Um, so today I'll walk you through three different things. So first I'm gonna show you how to set up your structured properties YAML file. And this will be one way in the first way that you can manage all of your structured properties in your organization. I'm also gonna show you how you can apply these structured properties to entities via the CLI. And then also how you can edit them and apply them via the UI. We're gonna get there last. So first let's take a look at this structured properties YAML. You can see I have one property already defined here and I'm gonna add a few more. Um, but first, I'll just walk you through what generally we have. Um, so you can see we have an ID field. It's going to be dot delimited. This is going to be how we organize, organize the structure of these structured properties in the UI. You'll see what that actually looks like in a little bit. Um, this obviously has to be unique across the structured properties that exist in your organization. The next most important field is going to be this type field. And this is what Maggie was alluding to, where now these are strongly typed and we support multiple different types. So we're gonna have the ability to specify a number, a string, a date, an urn, rich text, uh, you name it, all the good stuff that might want to um, have, yeah, that, that for the different types of values that you wanna set. We also have a cardinality field. Do you define whether this property should allow one value or multiple values when it's applied to an entity? Obviously display name and description, pretty self-explanatory. This next field is called entity types. So you're also allowed to um, specify what types 
it can take on this property. So in this case, only data sets and data flows can take on retention time. And then finally, we're getting it out of this allowed values field. And this is where you can specify the allowed values, <laughs> as you may have guessed. Um, so here we want to say that you can only set 30, 90, or 365 values for this structure property when you apply it to entities. If this is omitted, so this is optional, um, it's just open-ended. So it can be any number at that point. Um, but here, this is going to be a single select option, or it could be multi-select if I did that. But let me grab a few more structure properties that I have copied from somewhere else to save you guys the time and most importantly me the embarrassment of making a bunch of typos in front of all of you. So um, here we have more structure properties. You can see we have another number type that's going to be uh, open-ended because I don't have allowed values for a replication SLA. We have a date type and we have an earn type which I think is really neat. Um, this earn type is meaning that like this structured property, the steward type, um, is going to reference another earn in ent or another entity in data hub. Um, and this is where we had this type qualifier allowed types field saying that this structure property value has to be a corp user or a corp group, which makes sense because the data steward should be probably a user or group as opposed to another data set or something. And then um, finally, we get back to like a rich text type as well. So now that we have this structure property YAML file created, um, all we have to do is run a simple CLI command. It's called data hub properties upsert and then the reference to that file that I just managed. And then once you run that, we are going to create all these structured properties in your data hub, um, which is pretty sweet. And then something that I want to touch on before I move away from this YAML is uh, this idea of an aspect validator. And we've actually created a couple of different validators when working on structured properties. And the first one that I will talk about is this uh, pre preventing you from making backwards incompatible changes. Um, so let's say I want to change a structure property that already exists, such as this steward one from multi-select to single cardinality. Um, that would be a backwards incompatible change. If I went and applied that to entities with multiple values, that would then break it. Uh, excuse me. So now if I try to re-ingest this, I should get an error. And you'll see it gets three done, and then it gets confused at the fourth. And this usually takes a second to run the error. Um, but while it's printing out that error in a second, um, I just wanted to highlight the fact that we... While we introduced this custom aspect validator, um, we brought it back and made it generalized so that you can also create your own custom aspect validators for any type of aspect that you want. There's docs on this on our website. Shout out to David for his hard work on this and generalizing a lot of the work that went into like lower level structured property stuff and brought it back to be very generalized so everyone can kind of see it. Um, yeah, so just an example of how there's more than meets the eye at first glance uh, with structured properties under the hood. You can see we raised the air. You can't do backwards and compatible changes. Pretty cool. So it um, doesn't really matter. We have already saved these structured properties in Data Hub. Let's move on to actually applying these to an entity. Um, so right now, I'm just going to apply them to a data set uh, via the CLI. So right now, I'm going to apply it to this adoptions snowflake table. Um, if I go to the properties table right now, you can see there's nothing there. Um, and then in my YAML file, all I'm doing is specifying the earn of the data set and then a list of structured properties with values. So these are going to be the IDs that I defined in the previous file, and then the specific value that I want to apply to this data set. So let's ingest this really quick. Um, this is going to be another handy CLI command called data hub data set upsert, and then just that YAML file. Let's ingest it, and cool. So we upserted that data set, and if I do a refresh on this page, you can now see we have five properties applied. And they're grouped by the IDs and the um, like organization that you manage in your uh, based on the structure of the structure property. So you can see all the different five options here. We have the date field, number, um, rich text field. And then the nice new thing is you can now edit them in the UI. So let's say I want to edit this steward field and add a second one because this has cardinality multiple. Um, there's another user called admin. Whoops, sorry. Let's add admin update. And you can see admin is now added down here. But you can edit any of these guys. So you can edit the date. If I wanted to select a new date and also edit, um, you know, the single select guy, if I want to change what it is you can update it down there, rich text, you can edit all that sort of good stuff. Um, so now that we've edited a couple, I do want to move back and go back to this idea of custom validation. Um, so while we, while we had a validator for um, 
not making backwards incompatible changes on structured properties themselves, the definitions. We also have a validator for making sure that you are applying values correctly on the structured property uh, instance on an entity. So for example, the date validator will make sure that it is the correct date format. So if I do an incorrect date format right there, um, and then try to apply that to the data set using the same command that I had before, we are going to get an error. And not only is it just an error, it's a very helpful error, if I may say, telling you the, exactly the format that we expect and what's going on. Um, so that's always a good time to see. Um, yeah, so that's mostly it for my demo. I just wanted to show you guys like how we support them in the UI. Um, as Maggie talked about, fast, fast follow is gonna be um, the ability to add these structured properties via the UI and then as well as manage your structure properties for your organization and the UI as well to fully ram this feature. Um, our goal is to just give you guys incremental value as quickly as possible and keep you guys up to date. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. Thanks everybody.